Welcome to the losers match of BSL season 13, sorry, season 14, Hasu League, round of 32, group B. Bottom left hand corner, we have Nilsi, aka Invisible Man. Starting as the yellow Protoss, upper left hand corner, we've got Kiko starting as the green Terran. This is going to be on Metaverse. And Invisible Man, <laughs> the name, let's see if I can, the name's a little bit off, but whatever. Uh, I don't want to bother fixing it. I don't want to, basically, I don't want to shrink it and re increase it, whatever. Let me go ahead and give an overview of Metaverse because it is one of the newer maps this season. <laughs> Nelsie asking from. You got Bob's Guns over the Natural Expansion. Where you got the standard, and it's a really wide open Natural Expansion. Uh, a little bit more challenging to blockade, but you do have a double ramp over the third. So even though it's like a wider area, the units obviously camped at this location get the, the fire event. The, it almost reminds me of Revolver, but a little bit more extended in that regard. Uh, as far as natural expansion mechanics. Nearby third, but you can see it's exposed because you have this ramp interior and this ramp going interior. So it's kind of, there's a high ground advantage moving into it. And there's also at the 12 o'clock, the six o'clock, the three o'clock, uh, or sorry, the nine o'clock and the three o'clock, these bases, but there is a power generator in the way and you can, ex you can access them by taking either the temple down or mining out this mineral field. But it's kind of like, you can go ahead and mine that out to get a little bit of a safer third, but then you got to worry about taking this power generator down. And I think a lot of these buildings are stacked so you need the splash damage units. And then you have kind of, I don't know why player, I like that they throw this in there, but I have yet to see it be critical in any match. The center uh, double gas and whatnot. I actually want to see some sort of clever cheese that involves taking that base early. It looks like, speaking of, I don't know if I want to call it cheese per se. They, I know Terran feel like it's the cheese of economy, but I really feel like it on a four player map, it's almost like the standard thing Protoss does versus Terran. We are seeing a 12 Nexus from Invisible Man. It looks like we are seeing a quick refinery grab and a barracks, which suggests we're gonna see more of a factory opener. Three SCV wandering in there to get that gas, which definitely a faster barrack, uh, faster, sorry, factory. The question is, is are we going to see a two fact opener or are we just gonna see a rapid factory into a single factory into expansion build? In the meantime, I think that was a cross scout from Invisible Man. It looks like, and Kiko blockading, doing a little bit of damage, not able to get any base damage done, but shredding off some shield that's another factor of metaverse is it's, i think it's one of the few maps where i've seen the vertical ramps being fielded very narrow which is kind of it's cute cute to see first factory planted down looks like it is going to just be one factory into expansion because we're seeing that single scv move to gas after those initial three in and unfortunately for kiko as far as a response situation he's going to end up scouting his opponent last and so not gonna know uh, that it was, well, going to know that it was a Nexus first opener fairly late, which oftentimes it's challenging to have responses at large versus this. And on top of it, yeah, scouting it late, it's like, okay, well, it's even fewer options because you, when did you, you know, how did you know to do X, Y, Z, et cetera. Which is why Terran oftentimes have trouble don't like this build in particular because depending on how you open from here you aren't necessarily in a position to respond so scv scout is going to see that it's going to wander in it's going to see the two gate standard two gate plus seven x core follow-up three marines you can see holding that lower ground kiko is going to go ahead and grab his upon seeing that his command center before even dropping machine shop getting a quick vulture out to try to respond zealots Wandering up, getting some good damage. This Marine, one of them is going to get taken out. The second one taking a lot of, so weakened Marines. And a second Zealot moving out. Let's see if this Vulture is going to, is he going to go after it? No, actually, okay, there we go. For a little bit of a late response. Wondering what, actually what the ping was in this game. Might have been a little bit of a uh, high latency. Yeah, and I think it's going to be high latency because usually it's fairly easy to micro Vultures versus Zealots, but you can see right here the Vulture having a little bit more trouble micro against the micro against these out there, so I'm guessing they're playing in some pretty heavy lag. Mines being upgraded. Going for that quick Nexus, it means you have a lower Dragoon count, less map control. Looks like the Minerals already being mined out for Invisible Men to potentially grab that interior. That would be a very risky maybe to go for some sneaky attack along that edge with Dark Templar as a follow-up. That is possible cheese. That can be opened up by that. I can't imagine he wants to expand the 9 o'clock into his opponent. Usually not what you want to do versus a Terran, period. 
range is going to be finished. It's going to be three Dragoons to seal up the front. The Vulture hanging out, maybe to plant some mines to go ahead and deny what could have been a potential third. Still sitting on one factory. Armory plopping down to go ahead and make movement towards a uh, upgrade and maybe some timing pushes from there. We'll see if it's going to be the plus two, plus one. We've seen Kiko execute that a lot. The Dragoon's slipping straight across, and there aren't any mines yet. One mine there. The Vulture going to get wiped out. Ah! And so the Dragoon's taking a lot of damage. S some additional mines planted on the front, but one getting taken out. Is he going to risk? Okay, he's going to be able to take it out. Does able Is able to pop a mine. And now there's range to work on that bunker, and it's going to be a ways before Siege Tank's here. So some free minerals. And a fourth Dragoon moving up, although that one's nice micro there, especially in the midst of lag. Are the SCVs repairing? Yeah, they need a fourth SCV out here to help repair. Otherwise, that bunker is at risk of getting taken out. The Dragoon even with uh, was peaked on that corner. More reinforcements trying to come up, but Kiko very cleverly planting some mines underneath. So a handful of Dragoons getting wiped out here and there, but... I think there's going to be another attempt at this. Or maybe an attempt to pick off that siege tank. Kiko needs to be, should be wary of it because he saw the reinforcements coming across the map. Vulture, or an SCV, is he going to go for a hidden expansion in the upper right? Currently pocketed there. More mines being planted. Yeah, as invisible men wanting to get aggressive, instead running into more mines along the way. Kiko, I'm wondering if this is familiarity with invisible men and his, and his aggression. So opting to go ahead and cut off a reinforcement route, which is allowing these Dragoons to get stra uh, stranded and also allowing that siege tank count to grow behind this. Engineering Bay up, it's gonna float across that corner. The minerals are no longer being mined across that three o'clock. Invisible Men not really saturating that natural expansion and really kind of went, so it really went all in. Had four gateways behind this. I actually missed that. I'm like, this is a lot of Dragoons I'm realizing all of a sudden. But yeah, he went all in after this. He's, he paused probe production altogether and just started flooding Dragoon. So Kiko dropping those mines underneath really is giving him the match. He's already up to 42 SEVs. And there's GG. Wow, that was a bad cast on my part. Caught that it was four gateways and a, and a full attempt at break late. But Kiko doing everything that he was supposed to do. Getting those mines to cut off the reinforcements, growing the siege tank count on the front. So that's going to send him to the final match. And we're going to see, uh, unfortunately, Invisible Men is going to get dropped out of this season of BSL Season 14. But check out his YouTube channel, Invisible Men, there. Should have, uh, when I, yeah. Can't all be winners. <laughs> but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Nevertheless, thanks for listening.